whose name will you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. In order to grow, we must obtain what is necessary for our growth. This is brought about through the law of attraction. This principle is the sole means by which the individual is differentiated from the universal. Think for a moment, what would a man be if he were not a husband, father, or brother? If he were not interested in the social, economical, political, or religious world? He would be nothing but an abstract, theoretical ego. He exists, therefore, only in his relation to the whole, in his relation to other men, in his relation to society. This relation constitutes his environment and in no other way. It is evident, therefore, that the individual is simply the differentiation of the one universal mind which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And his so-called individuality or personality consists of nothing but the manner in which he relates with the whole. This we call his environment and is brought about by the law of attraction. Part 18, which follows, has something more to say concerning this important law. There is a change in the thought of the world. This change is silently transpiring in our midst and is more important than any which the world has undergone. These present revolutions in the opinions of all classes of men, the highest and most cultured of men, as well as those of the laboring class, stands unparalleled in the history of the world. Science has of late made such vast discoveries, has revealed such an infinity of resources, has unveiled such enormous possibilities and such unsuspected forces that scientific men more and more hesitate to affirm certain theories as established and beyond doubt or to deny other theories as absurd or impossible. A new civilization is being born. Customs, creeds, and precedent are passing. Vision, faith, and service are taking their place. The fetters of tradition are being melted off from humanity, and as the impurities of materialism are being consumed, thought is being liberated, and truth is rising full, robed before an astonished multitude. The whole world is on the eve of a new consciousness, a new power, and a new realization within the self. Physical science has resolved matter into molecules, molecules into atoms, and atoms into energy, and it has remained for Mr. J. A. Fleming, in an address before the Royal Institution to resolve this energy into mind. He says, In its ultimate essence energy, man may be incomprehensible by us except as an exhibition of the direct operation of that which we call mind or will. And this mind is the indwelling and ultimate. It is imminent in matter as in spirit. It is the sustaining, energizing, all-pervading spirit of the universe. Every living thing must be sustained by this omnipotent intelligence, and we find the difference in individual lives to be largely measured by the degree of this intelligence which they manifest. It is greater intelligence that places the animal in a higher scale of being than the plant, the man higher than the animal, and we find that this increased intelligence is again indicated by the power of the individual to control modes of action and thus to consciously adjust himself to his environment. It is this adjustment that occupies the attention of the greatest minds, and this adjustment consists in nothing else than the recognition of an existing order in the universal mind, for it is well known that this mind will obey us precisely in proportion as we first obey it. It is the recognition of natural laws that has enabled us to annihilate time and space, to soar in the air and to make iron float, and the greater the degree of intelligence, the greater will be our recognition of these natural laws, and the greater will be the power that we can possess. It is the recognition of the self as an individualization of this universal intelligence that enables the individual to control those forms of intelligence which have not yet reached this level of self-recognition. They do not know that this universal intelligence permeates all things ready to be called into action, they do not know that it is a responsive to every demand, and they are therefore in bondage to the law of their own being. Thought is creative, and the principle on which the law is based is sound and legitimate, and is inherent in the nature of things. But this creative power does not originate in the individual, but in the universal, which is the source and foundation of all energy and substance. The individual is simply the channel for the distribution of this energy. The individual is simply the means by which the universal produces the various combinations which result in the formation of phenomena, which depends upon the law of vibration, 
whereby various rates of rapidity of motion in the primary substance form new substances only in certain exact numerical ratios. Thought is the invisible link by which the individual comes into communication with the universal. The finite with the infinite, the seen with the unseen. Thought is the magic by which the human is transformed into a being who thinks and knows and feels and acts. As the proper apparatus has enabled the eye to discover worlds without number millions of miles away, so with the proper understanding, man has been enabled to communicate with the universal mind, which is the source of all power. The understanding which is usually developed is about as valuable as a VCR without a videotape. In fact, it is usually nothing more than a belief, which means nothing at all. The savages of the cannibal islands believe something, but that proves nothing. The only belief which is of any value to anyone is a belief that has been put to a test and demonstrated to be a fact. It is then no longer just a belief, but has become a living faith or truth. And this truth has been put to the test by hundreds of thousands of people, and has been found to be the truth exactly in proportion to the usefulness of the apparatus which they used. A man would not expect to locate stars hundreds of millions of miles away without a sufficiently strong telescope. And for this reason, science is continually engaged in building larger and more powerful telescopes and is continually rewarded by additional knowledge of the heavenly bodies. So with the understanding, men are continually making progress in the methods which they use to come into communication with the universal mind and its infinite possibilities. The universal mind manifests itself in the objective through the principle of attraction that each atom has for every other atom in infinite degrees of intensity. It's by this principle of combining and attracting that things are brought together. This principle is of universal application and is the sole means whereby the purpose of existence is carried into effect. The expression of growth is met in a most beautiful manner through the instrumentality of this universal principle. In order to grow, we must obtain what is essential for our growth. But as we are all times a complete thought entity, this completeness makes it possible for us to receive only as we give. Growth is therefore conditioned on reciprocal action, and we find that on the mental plane, like attracts like, that mental vibrations respond only to the extent of their vibratory harmony. It's clear, therefore, that thoughts of abundance will respond only to similar thoughts. The wealth of the individual is seen to be what he inherently is. Affluence within is found to be the secret of attraction for affluence without. The ability to produce is found to be the real source of wealth of the individual. It's for this reason that he who has his heart in his work is certain to meet with unbounded success. He will give and continually give, and the more he gives, the more he's going to receive. Now, what are the great financiers of Wall Street, the captains of industry, the statesmen, the great corporation attorneys, the inventors, the physicians, the authors? What do each of these contribute to the sum of human happiness but the power of their thought? Thought is the energy which the law of attraction is brought into operation, which eventually manifests in abundance. The universal mind is static mind or substance in equilibrium. It is differentiated into form by our power to think. Thought is the dynamic phase of mind. Power depends upon consciousness of power. Unless we use it, we shall lose it. And unless we are conscious of it, we cannot use it. The use of this power depends upon attention. The degree of attention determines our capacity for the acquirement of knowledge, which is another name for power. Attention has been held to be the distinguishing mark of genius. The cultivation of attention depends upon practice. The incentive of attention is interest. The greater the interest, the greater the attention. The greater the attention, the greater the interest. Action and reaction. Begin by paying attention. Now, before long, you will have aroused interest. This interest will attract more attention, and this attention will produce more interest, and so on and so on. This practice will enable you to cultivate the power of attention. Okay, now this week, concentrate upon your power to create. Seek insight, perception. Try to find a logical basis for the faith which is in you. Let the thought dwell on the fact that the physical man lives and moves and has his being in the sustainer of all organic life, air. We have to have air so that we must breathe. We breathe to live. Then let the thought rest on the fact that the spiritual man also lives and moves and has his being in a similar but subtler energy upon which he must depend for life and that, as in the physical world, no life assumes form until after a seed is sown, and no higher fruit than that of the parent stock can be produced. 
So in the spiritual world, no effect can be produced until the seed is sown, and the fruit will depend upon the nature of the seed, so that the results which you secure depend upon your perception of law in the mighty domain of causation, the highest evolution of human consciousness. As Emerson said, There is no thought in my mind, but it quickly tends to convert itself into a power and organizes a huge instrumentality of means.